Hi, so I'm going to um, talk about the shared system resources on a multiprocessor system and give a way uh, of uh, accessing these shared resources. So let's go to the presentation. So short word about uh, me. Uh, so I'm Lionel Debiev, so I'm uh, currently working uh, as a software engineer at ST Microelectronics for now more than 10 years. So currently I'm uh, developing uh, on the STM32 MPU platform, uh, which is currently the STM32 MP15 platform. So my focus is uh, clearly uh, around boot and the security stuff of the ecosystem that we deployed. And uh, this is a way that uh, helped me to contribute to some open source projects, which are on the trusted firmware A, the OTOS, U-Boot or Linux kernel on the crypto, crypto driver part. So um, let's now have a look to the agenda of this speech. Um, so the so first item should be to discuss a little bit about the multiprocessor design, uh, which is why we are discussing about the shared resources. And now uh, what define what is what are shared resources on the system? And the second item should be to know how to manage this, uh, these shared resources. Uh, a way to manage the shared resources would be using the SCMI protocols. So I will give you a description of the SCMI protocols and give some associated implementation uh, that are used uh, to um, prove these SCMI protocols. So I will go a little bit deeper at the end of uh, the speech, just to uh, give you um, an overview of the SCMI protocol uh, used by the STM32 MP1 platform. So first of all, uh, we will, I will present you the multiprocessor design. So why are we discussing about the multiprocessor? It's because it's come a standard in the SOC architecture today, uh, because uh, SOC architecture are multiple elements uh, in a single chip that embeds some multiple heterogeneous processors inside. So the, the, the aim of the, of the multiprocessor design is to isolate different function uh, specialized for more efficient uh, accelerators, such as the so real-time processors, audio DSP, video encoders, decoders, FPGA, for example. The gain of embedded such way of multiple processor is to increase the performance of the overall system because you can run multiple dedicated tasks in parallel, and this is really more efficient to use some specific multiprocessors. So the good aspect of using multiple processors is also to decrease the power consumption because depending the use case you try to play on this system, you are able to power off some processors that are not used depending the use case which is running. It also reduces the overall cost of the system on chip because it integrates multiples in one package. But, so, the over uh, cost of this solution implies to share the resources on similar, on different and multiple entities. So uh, why discussing about also this multiprocessor design is that because you will find this different uh, SOC architecture on a lot of objects today, on a lot of projects, which are mostly the most common of mobile projects, so such as some SOC given by Samsung or Mediatek. We have some IoT gateway now that embeds a lot of connectivity uh, specific entities like the STM32 MP1 or some NXP IMX series or some artificial intelligence specific SOC. So let's discuss now and, and address the shared resources. So first, um, the first is a, a point about the terminology which will be used during this uh, speech. 
which is about what are shared resources and what are the resources in this overall system. So we can call exclusive resources as a peripheral clock or interim presets or all other resources which are assigned and controlled by a single entity without any conflicts, which are most of the common um, resources that you will use. But we have to face some shared resources which are the central SOC resources shared by several processors or peripherals that can be used um, by several entities at the same time and which have to be um, shared like so GPIOs, regulators, clocks, resets, interruptions that may be uh, used by the different entities at the same time. And this is the key point of this topic. Um, we have also some common register banks that are mostly used inside a SOC, uh, but they are most platform dependent. So uh, here is a global overview of a system on chip that you can see that you may have some different processors uh, connected to an interconnect. So whatever the processor are embedded in the single in the same cluster or different processors or FPGM, you may have some different peripherals also, and all over the system are connected to the interconnect bus, and they are trying to access some shared resources, such as the memories or the other one. So for the memories, it's a little bit particular because most of the system will embed, uh, I would say some specific firewall uh, regarding the memory management. So memory is a, is a little bit apart, but for the QS bus, for the sensors, which are like, I would say voltage sensor, uh, voltage detector, thermal sensors, uh, if you look clock resets, power interrupts on IO, uh, they have to be clearly properly on the, on the overall system because the CPU use them for example, the DVFS management of its own processor. So managing the power and the clock for that. And uh, they have the CPU need to manage also the peripherals um, for the runtime power optimization or managing the reset of the different peripherals they own. So here is a big picture that showing um, the internal STM32 MP1 architecture. So I will not go uh, deeper in detail on each different blocks of the system because it will take too much time. But the key point is that we have at least three different firmware running in parallel in this SOC. Uh, two ones are separate on the Cortex-A, uh, which is running two sides, um, A7 secure, A7 non-secure side, uh, which own its their own firmware, and a Cortex-M4, uh, which is running its firmware also. So now the focus is on the different parts and different blocks that may be shared between the different firewall, as are the XTI, which is external interrupt, and we have the GPIOs, and we will be also very interested of the RCC, which is the reset and clock control, uh, reset and clock control block, and the power, which is here. And if you look, all these resources are maybe shared at the same time between the different firmwares. So uh, let's go to the next slide. Uh, so now managing shared resources. So the question is how to manage these shared resources in a complex system. Uh, I would say by the past, uh, we attached the fact that the Linux OS was running and in controlling the power of the application processor, uh, which is maybe good, but which implies some back, uh, so some issue uh, regarding some uh, system behavior, uh, if your Linux crash or for some system attacks on, on robustness. So the idea now is to dedicate a single entity that will be responsible for sharing the resources, which what we will call uh, in the coming slide, the system controller. So it will be uh, the main point of our system and the system controller must centralize the global knowledge of the shared resources state, which means that the shared resources at any moment um, have a state which must be known and must be asked by 
at a different multiprocessor and the system controller have a global and a correct view at any time of the state of these shared resources. So the system controller must um, follow some specific rules, I would say, uh, to properly manage its shared resources. The first one is uh, the idea of reliability that what we had just said previously is that a dedicated execution context uh, for the system controller is a key to avoid any attackers, any issue, any issue regarding the robustness of the overall system um, to um, execute properly and to control these resources, which may be quite critical in the, in the CSVM. Um, the second uh, item is also to be able to control and identify uh, the access which are made to these shared resources and properly identify the different processors that try to access to uh, the resources uh, to avoid any issue, uh, to uh, accept or forbid the access to a specific resources. Uh, a second point regarding this system controller is about the flexibility of uh, the system controller. Why? Because as we know, uh, most of these shared resources are clearly platform specific. And that means that this system controller must be adapted, designed, and developed link um, to the hardware. Uh, so this is main uh, critical now uh, development that should be handled by each sub provider. Um, it might also manage uh, in terms of flexibility the fact that your peripheral and your system will evaluate during the time, during uh, the use case, and depending on the feature you want to, uh, to, to, to address. That means that um, the system controller must be able to adapt and to, uh, to, to be uh, open in case of uh, use case that change uh, during the time to allow resources to one processor which is power on or one other which is power off. So that is the key of the flexibility. So now the last point is maybe the most important regarding uh, this system controller is the accessibility point of view. Why? Because um, so what we say is that we need a dedicated execution context which means that um, we need a stable API to uh, design uh, this system controller in terms of access. So a standard interface um, to access this system controller is a key of a correct system controller management because it gives a way that the software implemented in the different multiprocessor, the software drivers may remain unchanged uh, regarding the access to the shared resources. And this is clearly a key. And this is why we will discuss now about the SCMI protocols. The SCMI protocols will be a key to access to this system controller. So let's now describe this SCMI protocols. So SCMI protocol is a standard specification given by ARM, uh, which uh, is a system control and management interface. So uh, the specifications give a way of defining messages that are exchanged to discover and expose services between a client. And uh, so the client will be uh, the agent uh, in the SCMI specification and the server, which will be uh, called the platform. Um, so this include two different layers. Uh, first one layer are the protocols itself. So as you see, protocols are multiples. There are power domain protocols, uh, which will be uh, managing uh, the different various domain power saving states of the platform. Uh, so, so you have the performance management, uh, which will give you the control of the performance of a domain, uh, which can be composed of different engines, uh, such as uh, application processor, GPUs, uh, and all uh, other accelerators, for example. Uh, it also includes protocols regarding the clock management, so it's set an inquiry rate on platform uh, managed clock. Uh, so you have a protocol for the sensors, which have the ability to read sensor data and be notified of sensor value changes. 
uh, reset domain management, uh, so as uh, its name says, that controls the reset of the different uh, entities. And the voltage domain, which gives the ability to manage the voltage uh, level of a domain and the uh, voltage supply. So these are parts of the global uh, or the specific uh, SCMI protocol uh, given by this specification. And the base protocol is um, a protocol that allow, um, I would say, a discovery and self-description of the interface uh, to uh, the operating system. It's kind of dynamic, um, dynamic uh, discovery of the different protocols. So uh, now the second layer is around the transport layers, which offer a different way uh, to transmit, uh, to transport the protocol to, from the agent to the platform. Uh, they are based on Maybox and uh, shared memory based. So there are different transport types that we will explain a little bit later. So the key point is that you see that there are different entity who you can have so you have the platform controller, which is um, the entity that controls the hardware and the shared resources, and an operating system using the uh, standard protocol interfaces. Uh, you may have a specific device, and all of them are using different channel, which can be secure or non-secure channel, to discuss with the platform controller. The platform controller will um, use the transport layer as a similar and protocols and rely on the platform specific development to access to the shared resources. So at the time you see that only the platform controllers is able to access to uh, the shared resources. So a little bit deeper. Um, so of course the SEMI protocol uh, is a kind of client and server, so discussing over messages. So messaging are two parts. Um, so messaging are agent to platform, the A2P, which are request messages, and the platform to agent, we are the P2A um, messages, which, are, which can be synchronous responses, notification or delay responses. So um, all of them, are transiting around channels, uh, through channels which are, I say, based on shared memory plus a transport protocol chosen, which can be Mailbox, SMC protocol, or OptiTransport, which is currently under development and specific to the OptiOS. Uh, channel could be one or more dedicated per agents uh, because uh, the request messages could be synchronous commands or asynchronous commands. The main point is for synchronous commands, as soon as a synchronous command is sent uh, by the agent to the platform, the channel is blocked until the platform uh, gives a response to the agent. So if you want to have multiple commands uh, in parallel address from the agent to the platform, you need to have multiple channels uh, per agent. So two different channel type, a standard channel, which is used to transmit an exchange request and response uh, between an agent and the system controller. And the fast channel, which is a particular channel, unidirectional, and uh, which can be, which is specific to the performance protocol management to reduce the latency. So it's for sure not a synchronous or asynchronous command, it's just unidirectional and give low latency on this typical message. So what about uh, SCMI uh, around the Linux today? So SCMI specification uh, available now is a 3.0 specification. Um, so currently implementation inside the Linux kernel v5.9. Uh, um, so the v5.9 is supporting now the SCMI specification 2.0. Uh, the first introduced patch around the SCMI are v4.17. And uh, now we have uh, clock, reset, power, performance, and sensor protocols which are uh, implemented. Uh, the transport mailbox is also uh, fully implemented and recently added in the last kernel, uh, official kernel 
5.9, uh, the SMC transport and the notification uh, has been recently added to, uh, to this kernel. So coming changes uh, on the 3.0 are voltage regulator and sensor extensions. So coming next are uh, QoS management and some uh, security firewall uh, coming stuff. So uh, um, let's discuss now about how to uh, manage the SCMI uh, server inside uh, inside a, a, a SOC implementation. Uh, so the system controller implementing the SCMI. Uh, so the first scheme, uh, I would say the um, the, the one uh, which we which is uh, the real one given by ARM which is a reference implementation uh, by ARM, is uh, using a dedicated processor. So the example here is the Juno platform, which dedicates the Cortex-M3 uh, with the SCP firmware implementing this uh, SCMI server. The SCP firmware is now an open source firmware implementing the SCMI, uh, looking based on the, the specification. So this is, as I said, the reference platform and reference implementation. And uh, it controls the PMIC of the platform, so the different regulators of the platform. And it also controls the clock, voltage, and power getting of the different elements of this system. So the good point of this implementation is that it's clearly independent uh, execution context by using a separate and dedicated processor. But it also increases the overall footprint of the SOC because of adding this uh, new dedicated processor just for running this SCP firmware. So the next um, possible scheme is uh, what is currently under implementation between ARM and Linaro. So the project is called the Stratos project, is to use the application processor and thanks to the virtualization support, uh, you can have the SCMI server in a dedicated uh, virtual machine. So thanks to the VRTIO transport, um, there is a way between a Linux and uh, the SCMI server to go in and to coexist in uh, two different uh, compartments and execution context, which is really what we try to intend with this SCMI server in a dedicated execution context. So an alternative and possible scheme uh, is also on a same application processor to use as a trust zone. So this is the implementation that we use on the STM32 MP15. And it's, um, it's given by the flexibility of the Cortex-A uh, from ARM is to have a dedicated secure execution context, uh, which has its own um, context uh, completely um, working uh, in this trusted environment. And for sure, the same similar um, good point of this implementation is to reduce the SOC footprint because we are still using the same application processor. It's also um, cost reduction and it gives a full trusted and secure environment, uh, which is a little bit, I would say, better in terms of security uh, rather than the virtual machine usage. Uh, but it remains the fact that as you are running your system controller on the application processor, uh, you may give, um, I would say, a master responsibility of the overall system to this application processor because the SCMI server must be uh, accessible uh, to the different uh, other OS at any time. So uh, let's go now deeper on the STM32 MP1 implementation. So this is um, our implementation uh, for the STM32 MP1. So I've only represent the Cortex A7 uh, split between the trust zone and so the secure part and the non-secure part. Uh, just keeping in mind that we have um, Cortex M4 running uh, another coprocessor, which is not represented here. Um, the base implementation is uh, using the SCMI uh, based on the shared memory and SMC core. So, 
as you see, the shared resources are only accessed by the secure context. So the supported implementation are uh, using an OptiOS integration or using the trusted firmware ABL32, which is a little monitor. Uh, so on both implementation, uh, you may see that the Linux part will use uh, the standard clock frameworks with that frameworks framework and regulator frameworks, which are generic. So you can use your generic drivers and the SCMI clock driver reset voltage are implemented uh, following the, the, the associated frameworks. All of them rely on the SCMI driver to choose the correct, S, the correct transport layer. So on our system, we will use the SMC transport, which will call the SMC handler of the monitor parts and go through the SCMI server in the secure side, which dispatch the message to the SCMI clock reset and power domain, depending on the message it send, and will go to the platform specific drivers to access to share resources. So, um, a little bit uh, focus on the clock access sequence uh, on the SCMI. So, here uh, you have to quick, we, we will have a look to our peripheral driver will. Uh, set a rate on the clock. So here is typically um, an access from a peripheral driver inside Linux kernel uh, to do a set rate on a clock. So as usual, the set rate will give the ID of the clock and the rate, of course, and uh, the clock ID uh, will correspond to a SCMI clock and the SCMI clock provider has been registered to the clock framework of the Linux kernel. So you will handle this, uh, this call and go through the SMI clock specific driver to add uh, the correct protocol for the SMI. Uh, so this is a synchronous command, adding uh, the clock protocol ID in the message and clock message ID. So we will do the transfer to the SMI driver, which will, cause, which will call sorry, the transport layer SMI SMC to write in the shared memory uh, the message and call uh, the SMC that will invoke the SCMI secure server. Once the SCMI secure server receives the call, it will pass the message and detect that it's a clock message and give it to the SCMI clock protocol. The SCMI clock protocol will do the operation of the state rate and call the specific platform driver. Platform driver will handle and access directly the shared resources to, into the hardware and go back to the Linux system. So as you see, the Linux system at that time is blocked. We are on a synchronous command, only one call, and the channel is blocked at that time, and we'll wait for the return from this call. So the return of the call will be handled by the SCMI server, which will update the shared memory with the return statue, and go back the SMC to the Linux kernel, informing the peripheral driver that uh, it has been properly managed or not from the set rate. So uh, let's have a look quickly on the Linux server, uh, sorry, on the Linux kernel part implementation of the device tree on how the SCMI is described on the device tree point of view. So on the left, you have the shared memory definition, which is a common shared memory definition uh, in the Linux uh, device tree. And you can see that we handle uh, SCMI0 shared memory uh, with a size. So this one will be reused on the SCMI channel description uh, of the firmware. So we have another firmware specific to the SCMI, so the SCMI0, where we will find the compatible specific to the SCMI SMC transport with a given ID which corresponds to the SMC uh, transport ID. Uh, the shared memory is referenced here uh, and used by the channel description. And you can see that this channel will de describe the two different protocols that, uh, is a that the channel is able to handle. The channel will here handle and transport the SCMI clock protocol, so with the ID 14, and a reset protocol with the ID 16. So here is a simple description of a single channel 
in the Linux kernel. So the question is how to use it inside, uh, inside a driver and the peripheral itself. So this is here described for two different uh, peripherals on the system. So we will first focus on the DSI peripheral used. So as you see uh, on the board format that the clocks reference for the DSI are multiple clocks, you have the, I would say, the uh, specific and non-shared, so exclusive uh, clock, which is the RCC DCR DSI kernel clock, so which will be directly addressed by the Linux kernel. And we have an SCMI clock, which is an SCMI HEC clock, which is a global overall system oscillator. Um, so it will be directly managed by the SCMI server uh, because it can be shared by multiple, um, multiple processor inside and firmware that are running inside the system. So this uh, operation on the clock uh, will be addressed uh, through the clock framework and will go directly to the SCMI server. So the second um, example here is the M4 remote proc, which manage um, the M4 coprocessor. And this one uh, will manage the reset of this coprocessor. The reset of the coprocessor is shared between uh, two different firmware, could be the Linux one or uh, the secure, if you have an Opti OS running that both can be able to manage the reset of the coprocessor, depending the way that your uh, system is running a secure uh, coprocessor management or a non-secure coprocessor management. So on both cases, uh, you will have to go through uh, shared resources to manage this reset. So what is our current status on the STM32 MP1? Uh, the current status is that we have fully implemented the clock and reset management uh, of uh, the system, so based on the SCMI server. You have, as described previously, the possibility to embed the SCMI server on OptiOS or trusted firmware uh, implementation. So I would say both of them are now uh, upstream regarding the clock and reset uh, protocol management. Uh, so the opti part is uh, fully merged now, and the TFR, uh, to, sorry, the TFA version uh, 2.4 will embed this uh, the same. And for the U-boot, the SCMI agent driver uh, will be merged in the next uh, V2021.01 version. Uh, so now the next step in terms of implementation will be to uh, drive uh, the regulators of the platform to implement the performance for uh, the DBFS management. And uh, the last step would be to, un to, to manage a coprocessor CMI agent for the M4, because currently uh, we address the M4 with another kind of resource manager, which has been already shared on another presentation that you, you found the link just under. Uh, here is um, global links of the different uh, specification SCMI or platform using this SCMI implementation. And you will find also some SCMI direct stream link to OptiOS uh, trusted firmware on kernel side. Thank you for attending this call and uh, I'm, I'm available for replying different questions. Thanks again.